These words from our gospel reading, while he was still speaking, a bright cloud enveloped them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son whom I love, with him I am well pleased. Listen to him. Listening leads to learning, learning leads to leading, and leading learns to, leads to living. And this past uh, Monday morning, I had to do a little extra listening. Uh, we got up at 4.30 in the morning, actually at 4 o'clock, to get ready to go to the hospital so Ruth could have her outpatient surgery. And so the surgery was scheduled for 7.30, didn't play, take place until 8, and then I got sent off to wait till she returned somewhere to recover. But they told me, after the surgery, the doctor will come out and talk to you. So I got this little note. Surgery's done, things went well, go to this room. And that's when you find out you need to listen really closely. I'm sitting there in this little quiet space. And the doctor comes in, and she's got this little thing in her hand. It's blue, but it's got two little things on the opposite ends. So she said, well, things went well, but not everything. We were supposed to put some screws in, but the screws wouldn't hold. So I put in two cross wires. That's more information than I needed to know. And she said, now this is this little ball that you're going to use to inflate the air cap on her leg. Really? One end you inflate it with, and the other end you deflate it with. I listen closely. Because anytime that boot comes off, and it's only when she's not walking at all, and she's not walking very far, you got to know how to take it off and put it back on. I'm glad I listened, uh, for the most part. I didn't see the boot until after I got home. Found out that it's not quite what I thought it was. But had I not listened, that little ball wouldn't have done me any good, would it? There's a difference between hearing and listening. Today I pray that the work of the Holy Spirit will not only hear, but listen. And one of my favorite pastors who lives in Tennessee would say this, only his word spoken, only his word heard. Take home what God speaks to you and apply it to your lives. First of all, listen. God speaks to a number of people directly and indirectly on the Mount of Transfiguration. God speaks directly to Peter, James, and John, and directly and indirectly to his son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Stop, look, and listen. Witness what took place in the Transfiguration. For most of you, probably all, most all of you, this is not your first Transfiguration sermon. You know the story. I'm glad we had that Old Testament reading where Moses goes up on the mountain. And Moses comes back after he dies, not allowed to see the Promised Land, and he is there, and so is Elijah, and they're talking with Jesus about what's going to take place. We're not going to get carried away with this, but you realize that Moses and Elijah are alive. A witness to a resurrection of sorts before Christ was raised from the dead. Isn't that great? Another witness for you and I. And God speaks to Christ, and John says, This is my son, my beloved son. Listen to him. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Another witness to the Trinity that we all teach and believe in. He also speaks directly to his son. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. We have to admit at times Peter, James, and John had trouble listening. Remember what happens to Peter? He didn't want to hear that Christ would suffer and die. Remember what would happen to James and John as well as other disciples? James and John, through their mother, would ask to be at Jesus' right and his left when he comes into his kingdom, an earthly kingdom. And Jesus says, oh yes, things will happen, but what's going to happen to you won't be so pleasant because you're connected to me. God speaks directly to us, and at times we have trouble listening. At times we are more likely to listen to the world around us. I'm not going to pick on anyone specifically except to say these are sins, and we all are capable of accomplishing the same sins. The St. Louis Cardinals have a manager, his name is Schultz. I read the newspaper this past week, and they said it's good that Mr. Uh, Schultz is like a Jekyll and Hyde. Can you imagine that? It's good to be a Jekyll and Hyde. 
Because as you remember, when they celebrated the division championship, he swore like a sailor. And this writer was thrilled about it. Because that's good for the team. Really? Mike Schultz is a Christian. Is it good that he swore like a sailor as a Christian? Well, you tell me. Is it good for you if you swear like a sailor? That's, I was in the Navy. I guess I could use that term. Is it good for you when you swear? Have you ever done that? Ever hit your thumb with a hammer? Ever do something really stupid and say the words that you wish you could take back but can never take back? Or how about, we're getting serious here, how about halftime at the Super Bowl? Folks, that was pornography. I didn't watch it. We turned it off before halftime came on. I heard two people, three people, speaking about it on KMOX radio once and one morning. <clears throat> the two men on the show were greatly opposed to what they saw. The woman on the show thought it was fine. Hello. Don't know if you saw it or not. But folks, the world around us will teach us things, want us to listen to what's going on in the world and say it's just great. Now here's the latest thing. Don't go out and buy this, please. Do you know you have a you got cats here? You got a dog? Do you know you can get a cuss, a cuss collar for your dog now? You can, instead of barking, it swears for the dog. And do you know that they have already sold out of all of them? I might say the world is going to the dog, but you probably figured that out already. Sometimes we're more likely to listen to the world, sometimes to the temptation of the devil. The same temptation that came to Eve is one of ours as well. Did God really say? Take a look at the lifestyles of the world around us. Our children and our grandchildren, for some of you, your great-grandchildren, will have no problem with alternate lifestyles when it comes to sexuality. That's what they've been taught. Go back to the scriptures. Read what the scriptures say. God created us a specific way. You have been created in a specific way. The devil says, don't listen to what God has to say. Listen to what you feel. And what you feel might be just as well as what God has to say. The third thing that tries to teach us or lead us to listen to it is our own sinful flesh. I remember a cartoon many years ago. Maybe I've quoted this cartoon before. Uh, I'm not sure I did here. There's a Pogo cartoon, and Pogo says, I've met the enemy, and it is me. I still remember a child in confirmation class in Iowa. I asked who was the worst sinner they knew, and this young man was brave enough to say himself. Does anyone know you any better than you do? Your heart, your thoughts, your words? No. God does, and thank God he forgives us. God advised us to listen to a son whom he loves and who came off the Mount of Transfiguration. Do you remember what the, in the text said? Don't tell anyone what you've heard or seen until the Son of God is raised from the dead. And Jesus did go that path. One of the gospel lessons says he set his face like flint to go to Jerusalem. Would you have set your face like flint, knowing that it would lead to crucifixion? No, it would be to rejection by others. I think it would have been very difficult. It was very difficult. He wept like, wept like the drops of blood in the Garden of Gethsemane. It is Jesus who spoke the word of life. To the disciples, he would promise the work of the Holy Spirit. How about you? Have you been promised the Holy Spirit? Well, check the baptismal font. Some of you may have been baptized here. I don't know. Wherever you were baptized, God came to you and said, You belong to me. The work of the Holy Spirit, the water and word, so you might be fellow redeemed of Jesus Christ. It's Jesus Christ who continues to speak the word of life today. One of the promises he made through the disciples was, whoever sins you forgive, they are forgiven. Did you get that this morning? Your sins are forgiven anew this morning. That's one of the blessings of being in worship on a regular basis is you probably, if you're like me, you sinned this past week. But yet, in the midst of that, God promises to forgive you when you confess your sins. 
Listen, learn, lean, and live. Learn. Peter learned, sometimes the hard way. Remember what happened when Peter spoke to Jesus and said, no, you should not do this, you should not be killed? Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. Really? Peter sometimes learned the hard way. Jesus says to Peter, before the rooster crows, you'll deny me three times. Remember what Peter's response was when Jesus looked at him? He went out and wept bitterly. He realized that Jesus had spoken the truth about him. James and John learned Sometimes the hard way. There's a situation, I don't remember exactly which village, where James and John said, Hey, Lord, you want us to call, why don't we call down fire and hail and destroy these people? And Jesus says, No. He rebuked them. When, he, when they asked if they could sit on the right and left when you come into your kingdom, Jesus says, Oh, you'll go through a certain things like I do. But a sitting right and my left is not mine to give, but my heavenly Father's. Sometimes, we learned the hard way. Think of the last time you had to learn the hard way. It may have been something that happened to you that you just can't believe it happened. Something you regret, perhaps, for the rest of your life. Think of when it was the last time you cried out to God because of some bad decision, some lack of faith, or the like. It's amazing to me that sometimes I can look back on my life and the bad decisions are the ones I remember, not the God-pleasing decisions and not all the blessings that he's given. When that happens, go back to the cross. Go back to the empty cross and see what Christ did for you. I love this quote from the Proverbs. It's also quoted in the New Testament. My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when he rebukes you because the Lord disciplines those he loves and he punishes everyone he accepts as a son. Listen to Jesus' own words. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will even be more fruitful. How is the pruning going in your life? As long as you have life and breath, God will continue to prune. Because he wants to make you into someone who can reflect Christ in their daily lives. <clears throat> Listen, learn, and lean. This is the gracious invitation of Jesus. Come to me, all you weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Fear would lean on Jesus. Remember what happens after the resurrection? There's an encounter of Jesus and Peter and the other disciples. And Jesus asked Peter three times, Do you love me? How many times did Jesus, how many times did Peter reject Jesus? Three times. And fulfilling that, Peter became a great ambassador who write the words of our New Testament reading today. He became an ambassador for Christ. John would lean on Jesus. In fact, he would lean on him probably directly at the Lord's Supper, that first Passover meal. But who would Jesus give his mother to to take care of? He looks at John and says, Behold, your mother looks at his mother and says, Behold, your son. And John would lean on Jesus. As a matter of fact, John would be, lived to be the oldest disciple. He learned to lean on Jesus. You and I learn to lean on Jesus when we come to him in prayer. Can you, is there anything too small to pray about or anything too big to pray about? No way. You can pray anywhere, anytime. You don't have to speak it out loud. It can be a thought. And the Lord promises to hear your prayer before you even ask. What a great blessing that is. You and I learn to lean on Jesus when we come to him in confession. We are burdened with guilt. We are burdened with inability to to carry out what God wants to see in and through us, and he hears our confession. We come to him who listened to his father. As he died on the cross of Calvary, he would say, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. He lived a sinless life in order to be the perfect sacrifice. He died to take our place. It's an empty cross we find for living, now and eternally. We come to Christ in the Lord's Supper. We continue to come to him as he has the words of eternal life. And for many of us, 
we've come to cherish the red letters in the Bible. I would encourage you to buy one of those books. See those five categories that pastors encourage you to look at. I still remember John. John was a member of the first church where I served. John was in the hospital after having a heart, uh, heart examination. I don't know at that time whether he knew he had a heart attack. And I talked to John. I said, John, what do you do when you get into trouble? What do you, where do you go? He says, I go to the red letters in the Bible. The next day, he would die. I was privileged to preach at his funeral. Thank God John went to the red letters in the Bible. If you have a red letter edition of the Bible, go there. Listen to what Jesus Christ has to say. Listen, learn, lean, and live. Jesus speaking in John chapter 10, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. You will come in and go out and find cash. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. If we listen, we learn, we lean, we'll continue to live in Jesus Christ. Let's go back after the resurrection. Jesus never abandoned his disciples. The first thing he offered them after his resurrection was unconditional peace. And he will never, never abandon you. A couple of days ago, I woke up early in the morning and these three words came to me. I think I must have been thinking about the sermon, not sure. Live life today. Tomorrow's not here yet. Yesterday's gone. When that thought came to my mind, the first person that came to my mind was Kobe Bryant. I think he's 41 years old. Kobe's not with anybody anymore. Oh, he's with the Lord. He's a Christian. How old are you? If you're above 41, do the math. If you're below 41, Lauren Molly, do the math. Has God been gracious to you? come to Bible class this morning, you'll find out a little bit more about what that means for us as we live life today. What does it mean to live life today? Here's some words that I'd like for you to keep in your mind. Sin boldly, repent often, worship His majesty. Sin boldly, those are not my words, those are Martin Luther's words. Now, it doesn't mean go out and do whatever you want. He says, go out knowing you're a sinner. And know that God will work even in the midst of your sinfulness. Isn't that great? Secondly, repent often. How often do you have the opportunity to repent? Every time you become aware of some sin in your life. God doesn't say, wait till Sunday, I'll talk to you then. Or when you feel better. Or when you've made up for your mistake, whatever it is. <clears throat> Confess. Be, be sorrowful for what's going on in your life. And he will hear your prayer and forgive you. Sin boldly, repent often, worship His Majesty. One of my favorite songs is on a CD that I have in my car that I play quite often, or when I walk around the track, is worship His Majesty. Worship His Majesty unto Jesus be all honor, glory, and praise. Majesty, worship His Majesty. Jesus who died, now glorified, King of all kings. What a great way. And worship doesn't take place only on Sunday. We live lives of worship every day. And Christ's continuing benediction will be there when there's no need for a benediction. Remember this comes centuries ago. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Now, what sign is there for you to see as you listen? It's the cross. In a way, it's the Holy Cross in Christ. Amen? And now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus and the life everlasting. Amen. Our sure we'll get there. Okay. <clears throat> Don't yell it out. Just raise your hand if you know what this is. Oh. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Don't yell it out. Right. I didn't I said don't yell it out. Raise your hand if you know. We have one and one back there that's not paying attention. Okay.
Okay, what is it, folks? For rich couple. For what? Oh. Lauren and Father, would you agree? All right, so <clears throat> let's make sure we know what this is. Lauren and Molly, this is a phone. <laughs> this is what a phone used to look like, right? Now, there's a difference. What do you do when you hear the phone ring? What do you do today? I heard this by a comedian this is, uh, yesterday. What do you do when you hear the phone ring? Take a message. Yeah, you get a message. <laughs> you don't answer it anymore. You let it go to voicemail. And then if you're like, hey, we're video recording this. <laughs> Then if you're like one of my children in my family, they don't answer, they just text. If I want my son to talk to me, I have to leave a text for him to call me. Okay, so you need to listen when the phone rings. And then you can just choose whether or not you're going to do what it says. <clears throat> now we're ready for the next one. Rick, raise your hand if you know what it is. Are you listening? I love that. Stop. Okay, what is it? A railroad crossing, right? And what do you do to, when you go to a railroad crossing? What do you do? Stop, look, and listen. Michael did a great job with this picture, didn't he? Yes, he did. Just this past week, someone tried to beat the train to tracks and was killed. When I was in high school, the high school, one of our high school classmates, now he was a year before me, captain of the basketball team, his dad was killed on the railroad tracks, taking the truck across and installed. And he was no more. This, this young man was 17, I think, at the time when he lost his father. You've got to listen. You've got to stop. You've got to just look and now listen. One more recording. This may be a little more difficult. Try not to make it more difficult than it needs to be. And if you're a visitor, you might not know this, but you might. Anybody know who this is? I mean, anybody know what this is? What is this? Pastor Ryder. And he's beginning a sermon here. What do you do when Pastor Ryder speaks? Do you hear or do you listen? You need to do both. Right? I only bring that up today because this is Transfiguration Sunday. And God the Father speaks to us and says, to the disciples and through time and eternity, listen to my, listen to him. He is my son, in whom I'm well pleased. And today we want to talk about what that means to listen to the words of Christ, to learn from them, to lean on them, and then live them in our daily lives according to the will of God. Continue to listen, and you'll be surprised about what you learn. Amen. 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 We continue with the Alleluia verse, which will stand and speak the words.